As top predators, wolves know all about staying out of sight. However, Jeff Dolphin has a hunting trick of his own. There's a yearling wolf from the blue stem pack. We can barely hear him. He's one we might try and get a look at today. There are only 75 Mexican wolves known in the wild. At any given moment, wildlife specialists like Dolphin can tell you the location of most of them. Okay, this is 1290. This is her brother. You see this big mountain right here? This is Mount Baldy on the horizon. And he's been just to the east of it, directly where I'm pointing. Many of the wolves are fitted with transmitting radio collars. Each has its own signal and corresponding number. Using a method called radio telemetry, Dolphin can use the signals to keep track of individual wolves and entire wolf packs. This is 1107, the one we heard on the way up. He's the closest out of all of these ones that we're hearing. While radio telemetry can reveal locations, it can't tell much about wolf behavior. At least, not without some additional detective work. We came up here, we had a cluster of points from this female's GPS collar um, in this area. Um, it showed she was here for about two days. It could be that the female is looking for a spot to make a den, a birthplace for future pups. Also, I mean, there could be a, a kill somewhere here in the area, so we're checking these points one by one to see if there's anything, anything that was keeping her here. To the untrained eye, this hike reveals nothing. But for the trained nose... It's very musky smelling like elk. Dolphin follows the scent and finds evidence of wolf activity. This is where the point's at, right here in this area. And there's fur here, elk hair, lots of elk hair. They were eating on something and this is where it was. All evidence pointing to an elk kill with not just one, but several wolves working together on the hunt. Now look at that tree. You see the broken branches on it? That means this animal, this was its last moments right here. They had it crowded in these trees and that's when they were able to take it down. Wolf packs can vary in size and number. Gray wolves, for instance, tend to have larger packs than Mexican wolves. However, the basic structure is the same. There's the alpha male and female, plus the pups and juvenile wolves. Usually the pups from the previous year stick around and help raise one litter and then disperse the following year. One of my favorite things about wolves is their social structure. Um, that was one of the things that surprised me is how close they resemble our family. They have their ups and downs and their drama and you'll see mom and dad discipline the younger ones and they play and it's just, it's amazing to watch the interactions uh, between the pack members and how loyal they are and how smart and how much they work together to make sure that the whole pack survives and is strong. Wolves nurture and care for each other. However, that's not to say all is peaceful in the pack. When those wolves become, you know, a year and a half, two years old, the adult, those juveniles will start to disperse and try and look for other males or females to pair with and start packs of their own in different territories. And whether it's a new or established pack, the struggle for the top job never ends. It's kind of natural selection and nature's way of ensuring that strong, healthy, dominant wolves are always there to uh, pass their genes along. So there's always a fight, you know, and a reestablishment of dominance. Wolves have intense social structures, structures that couldn't exist without a means of clear communication. I like to howl right when it's getting dark. And that's when I'll go as close as I can to them and I'll howl at them like this. At this time of day, there's no reply. But closer to dark and with wolves closer by, Dolphin has prompted return howls, which he's recorded. I almost feel like I'm talking to him, but I don't know what I'm saying. But howling is a, is a very complex thing, and each howl is different. Like, my voice is different from your voice. One wolf howl is different from another. But even if he can't speak wolf, Dolphin and his colleagues can detect enough differences to gather some basic data. Sometimes what we do is we'll do a howling survey 
but we'll go to the rendezvous sites and howl, and then the wolves will howl back. But we can try and count how many pups are there sometimes from those howls. Because many wolf populations were eradicated more than 100 years ago, much of the knowledge we once may have had of wolves died with our ancestors. Now, it's a matter of regaining that knowledge, even as wolves reclaim their place in the wild. When you follow an animal like this through the woods and see where it goes, where it hunts, and how it utilizes the landscape and its environment that it lives in, you definitely learn to see things like the way they're seeing them on the landscape.